Sage, we're about as far away from Las Vegas as you could possibly be. But this is what Cowboys do when they're not working. And you're back in Montana for a short bit before you go to the national finals. Now, last year you made your first trip to the NFR. How big was that to get that experience going back now, number one in the world? Oh, it was awesome to be there last year. Um, you know, I, um, I had a good time and I, I had some success, but I feel like I could have done better. So kind of lit a fire in me this year and um, I had some goals set. And yeah, I'm happy where I'm at this year. Can you ever really fully be prepared for the national finals when you've never been there before? Um, I don't think so. You know, I thought I might be, but once you get down there and walk in that building, it's um, it's an unreal experience, and it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And um, but yeah, it was um, unbelievable experience. And once the tenth round came around, I felt like I settled in pretty good. But yeah, it's every night is um, uh, an experience for, of itself. You know, it's it's unreal. The thing that strikes me about you and in, in, in being a professional cowboy, what you've done in such a short period of time, 2018, you're. 52nd in the world, 74th in 2019, 97th in 2020. Yeah. And then you had the breakthrough year last year to finish 11th. How did you do it? Uh, well, 2018, 2019, I had some injuries. I broke my leg. And um, so coming back from that took me a minute. But then I just kind of stayed around Montana and circuit rodeo. I didn't really go out of Montana. And then uh, 2020, I kind of, I, like I said, I had some goals set and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go give it a go. And um, I stayed home and I got a, little pra a lot of prax horses, um, Sankey Pro Rodeo. They were bucking out at their house over there. So I went over mm -hmm. to Sankey's and got on a lot of their horses, good horses. Um, and yeah, I got dialed in and felt good. And uh, 2021, I went and hit the road and um, t it took off from there. A lot of guys have told me that there's politics to, to rodeo and scoring and that to, to, to get that break through that glass ceiling. In other words, some guys that are world champions, they're going to come out and they're going to have a, a, a pretty decent score before they ever get out of the, the chute. Is it, one, is that true? And two, if it is, how did you find your way to the top as one of the new guys that was able to break through and get the scores you need to be at the top? Yeah, well, it might be true, but I just don't uh, really pay attention to it. You know, I just um, go do go do my job as best as I can. And uh, mm -hmm. if you do it right, they're gonna have to score you. So um, that's what I try to do. And I just stick to the basics and um, just have fun mostly. Talk about the uh, the sport that you're in. And, and when you talk about Saddle Bronc, uh, Dan Mortensen, uh, him and Casey Tibbs, the two greatest saddle bronc riders ever, six-time world champion. He lives just down the road in Billings. Have you ever had a chance to visit with him, talk to him a little bit? And, and if you did, what did you what did you talk about? What did you ask him? What kind of knowledge did he impart with you? Um, yeah, I know Dan pretty good. Uh, my dad and him rodeoed kind of in the same era, yeah. so um, they're good buddies. And um, yeah, he's just uh, he's great to have around. He's a great to have around because I mean he's a good guy to learn from and get advice from. And like you say, just um, there is a lot to rodeo. I mean the travel and the uh, way you spend your money and just um, just bronc riding itself. So yeah, he's good to have around and get advice from. When you go when you go ten consecutive nights at the NFR, which you don't do all, all year, you never have that kind of schedule. Um, ten consecutive nights. Do you do you approach it any different at all than you would if you were up in Red Lodge or down in Cody or in Livingston? Uh, no, sir. I just try to go at it the same exact way. You know, yeah. it's it's the same old thing. I mean, it's a little different for sure, but you try to just keep it simple and just do your job and um, just like I say, have fun and don't worry about stuff. You know, uh, you know more than anyone. You go in setting the single season earnings record, but you know, ten days in Vegas, you can win that much alone in ten days. So being number one comes with it a huge, huge challenge to stay there because so much money's on the line. Do you like that pressure going in number one? Uh, yeah, I mean, it don't really bother me. I mean, I've been there all year, so they've all, they've kind of been chasing me all year long, so it don't really bother me that much, but yeah, there's a bunch of money to win down there and you're definitely not safe at any, any point. So like I said, I'm just gonna go do my job and uh, yeah, I'm excited to be down there.